the force and any belief by force is not accepted. The third principle is equality. Islam doesn't believe in, in, in racism or ethnicities or uh, class society or uh, any kind of that. Uh, we are all to Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve were made out of clay. So as the Prophet Sallallahu And the fourth principle is Shura, which is, we're gonna discuss it in, in a little bit, but uh, Shura is a pillar of the society and their rulership and their affairs and their right and their obligations. So these principles, justice, freedom, equality, shura, are main principle of the Sharia and no absolutely compromise in any of these principles. Now, when we look to this uh, election of today, it is something uh, become dominant, become known through all the whole world, even Muslims countries, and um, widespread practice. So it's they call it um, something new come to life, just like many, many, many other issues come to life. Um, it needs the understanding of Sharia and its views and perspective and stand toward the Sharia. And this is work must be the Muslim scholars and researchers and universities and institutions should have went into detail and do all kinds of research and um, bring in the gap of this lack of the information that is from majority of the Muslims. Uh, now, when we say intikhab or election, this is a word, we, we know what is it in Arabic language, uh, and nukhba is the the, the best of the community, the best of the society, the best of the people. That is nukhba. Uh, that means you scan and scam the whole community and uh, take or select or vote or empower or appoint the best of them into the positions. Um, and that is Nukhbatul uh, Qawmi We are, we don't want to use the elite, nor we want to use the mala, as the Quran said. Nukhba uh, is absolutely uh, not mala, nor uh, elite. Uh, they are a, they are, they are from among the people. They are the best of the people. They have carried in themselves and uh, in their time, in their mind, in their soul to care about the society and the community in according to the principle that we went, the justice, shura, and freedom, and so on and so forth. That is what we call nukhba, or the best among the community or the society. Uh, now, we know this right now. There are many, many kinds of elections uh, from country to country, from place to place, from the level of uh, election to uh, so on and so forth. The, as we see it today, we can see there are definitely consequences of the election. Some of it positive, some of it negative. We start with the positive. Why we have to have election? Why humanity come to consensus and agreement that we have to have election? Because of the following. Number one, uh, to prevent uh, tyranny from the rulers. You give them term according to contract that they promised and they uh, spread their agenda and their manifesto, what they're going to do. And then you hold them accountable to that. 
So it is a best way and a good way to uh, prevent tyranny. But also it is the best way to settle dispute and difference, differ, differ, differentiation among groups and people peacefully. So once the, the, the study for a military or force or coal or take over, this is the best peaceful way to settle the political dispute. The third one is to develop political understanding and right and wrong among all people, not just the elite or the educated or the politicians. Uh, the, 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 the politics is part of life and part of life must be addressed by the dean and has a place and space in the dean. And also um, making people aware of what they can do, what is their responsibility and what is their duty. Number four, it was we see it most of the time, uh, bring stability, political stability and um, uh, prevent uh, the cools and the revolutions and rebellious actions to happen. People have expressed themselves and they accept the result and move on with it. Number five, um, it's an ideal result, which is basically uh, the people that are pleasing to the masses and the voters empowered and took positions. So uh, nobody is going to complain. Okay, this is the system. You put your input, and this is the result. You need to be uh, to to take it. So. Because this is a good way, peaceful way, and satisfactory way. All other ways are, as we know, many uh, are keep, keep in fight and friction and so on and so forth. Number six, also, um, the um, action taken by the rulers who are come from the will of the people and through the election, it, 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 it is accepted and many people will follow it and listen to it uh, because it comes through process and comes through consensus and majority and people have expressed their concerns and they can correct, they can object, they can uh, make their voices known to this elected official to rectify their path or their stand or their project and so on and so forth. Number seven, uh, it gives authenticity and authority and power to those who are being elected by the people. And the eighth one, um, it is the only way after Iman and Taqwa, to force leaders and those who are in position and decision makers to care about the people because people are going to pay them back, either right or wrong, vote them in or vote them out next term when the election comes. So there is a kind of a accountability uh, in the hand of the people. And the ninth one is, uh, definitely inspire people to be proud of their system and their country and their uh, legislators and their uh, uh, people who are in power. And finally, it's, 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 it's a one for to satisfy Shura in Islam. These are the good ones, but there are also some negative consequences. Number one, those parties, as we see, they focus on opposing and demonizing and fighting one another instead of focusing on what is the best for the people. Number two, um, incitement. Uh, they use uh, means and ways of incitement to the point where there is anger, friction, 
uh, slander, demonizing, and so on and so forth. Number three, take a lot of time and resources from the people. I mean, campaigning and campaigning on and on and on and on. We start with the locality and then go to the um, district and then counties and then state and then national. It's, it, it takes a lot of um, time and a lot of discussion. Uh, most of the time, those discussions are not guided or actually purposely, intentionally misguided and create friction and division among the society. Number four, uh, this is the key point, is it leads to rigidity in the positions and also um, alliances with benefit or ideology or locality or materialistic things. So uh, divide really the society into small group, small group, and then um, integrate some from right to the left, from the middle to the above. So it creates this kind of dynamic that is not harmonious, not a fully make, having, making the society in harmony. Number five, they, once the election started the process, we can see groups and parties and those who have interest or influence, they start making alliances in a different line, in a different agenda, in a different outcome, in a different strategy, not the original one that we are going to serve, to serve the best interest of the people with no, with no, with no distinction or discrimination. Number six, um, definitely the uh, people accept this uh, secular rules. Yeah, we have to election basically impose secular rules on the society. Um, seventh one, we can see the ultimate goal of those candidates is to please their constituent, right or wrong, um, what they can or what they can. They exaggerate, they promise many, many, many things and they don't follow that. There is no stick, you can hold them accountable to their promises and so on and so forth. Basically, they want to win the vote and then they'll go in their own way and their own thinking and their own conviction and their own um, method. And number eight, definitely, um, either cheating, lobbying and um, building some kind of a conflict of interest among the candidate, among the followers, among the parties, among the voters, and so on and so forth. And the nine, um, it's um, has some some harm in it. Uh, that kind of harm is imminent and inevitable because you can see instead of uniting the society you keep dissecting and, and dividing the society according to the candidate or the principle or the interest or the um, whatever is there so these are the positive ones and the negative ones and uh, we are aware of it and we get to be aware of it to understand it so it is not pure good nor pure bad it's a mixture and people can make it uh, more good than harm or can do it the other way around. Now, um, the election, the election campaigning, that is, that is a, a, a problem. Most of it is misleading, exaggerating, targeting ways, has psychology, has means to manipulate instead of informing straightforward, honestly, and with fact stated. Um, this is always a company, this kind of election. Uh, also, uh, most of the time, they promise something impossible just to attract people. And it sometimes include kind of lie or hypocrisy or the worst of it 
I can show how good I am only if I show you how bad my competitors. And that is, that is Islamically just wrong. Uh, you can show us how good are you and don't worry about the bad things about others. This is um, kind of uh, negative aspect of it. Um, and this is when, when you only build your uh, agenda for election on the negative and the bad things you told others, uh, it could go to haram in Islam. It could be forbidden. That's not because it in, incite hatred, division, and uh, the harm is greater than, than the benefits as out of it. So there is a limit in Islam where, where you can competitive and pre present positive agenda and leave people to judge. Instead of you uh, fish for wrongdoing here and there to your opponents in, our, in order to uh, destroy them and take the lead. Um, also, it's been a lot of wasting, a lot of resources, a lot of money, and it becomes, as we know, uh, the, the, the capital is ruling the, the, what the candidate is going to win. Who, has, who can collect or has a $10 million, $50 million, or $100 million, or so on and so forth? So it's eliminate, automatically eliminate the average and the common and the low, uh, low level of finance though they might be more qualified and might bring uh, more good to the, uh, to the part of this politics. Uh, even to the point where votes are bought. They spend money here to promise them this project and promise them this and this. So it's a kind of little bit kind of buying and, 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 and buying the votes with promises and maybe with the project and so on and so forth. All of this making it a kind of very difficult for people to choose and clear. You keep campaigning forever and you don't come to conclusion where to go from it. And it is mixed of good and bad all the time. You have to be well educated and well learned to be able to, uh, to do it. We are not going to talk about uh, bribery or an honesty in election because we are in a free world and anybody can expose anybody and everybody monitoring everybody. And so it doesn't exist in the Western world, this uh, Russia and this bribery and uh, cheating, most likely it is okay. This is in, in, the, in the backward countries, maybe, yes. So with that, um, uh, the question is, is this election a Western matter or has any root in the Islamic history and Islamic practice and Islamic teaching? Um, this is a question, uh, need a lot of study, but we believe with no doubt about it, it has origin in Islam and Sharia and history. Uh, well, say, for example, to, during the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was something called Bayatul uh, Nuqaba, means uh, people every 10, 15, elector select someone to represent them. And those called Nuqaba, these are the ones who give the final thought or negotiate or appoint someone or vote for someone. And as we know in Bayat al-Aqaba, um, how the uh, Sahaba did that. And also there is an Islam called Urafa and uh, that Islamically is known that every, every division in society or group, they have to have Urafa, Urafa, someone to connect and communicate uh, on behalf of them. And actually, the Prophet Sallallahu used to ask people to um, re refer to this called Urafa. Now, 
and there is a word naqib and we know what is nuqaba in 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 in, in, in the sharia um, there is in the during the khilafa of uh, righteous khilafa guided khilafa there was a, a called bay'a am means a collective covenant giving to the khalifa in the open i mean in the masjid and we know uh, how all khalifa was giving the pledge of obedience and uh, followed by the sahaba in the masjid of rasulullah or in many other places um uh, the other also uh, system that we know uh, when uh, when umar ibn khattab appointed seven to select among them a khalifa after him they basically they agree on giving it to uh, Uthman and so uh, that is a system of giving the bay'ah too but also after that you get the approval of the society and once the once the ahlul bay'ah once the selected representative qualified one the qualified shura people uh, has come to agreement then it is open for all for all public to follow that um, now as we uh, see there are according to the to the islamic history we are not going to go through that but we see it in the in the in the khilafa rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam let it to the people did not appoint he made some hints but never say clearly explicitly this is the one supposed to take the affair of the ummah after me because it will be taken as a as as, as president and then it will be like that forever uh, you appoint who is going to come next to you Though it is not haram, but the Prophet ﷺ refrained from that to leave the ummah on their own free will, according to their conditions and circumstances, to uh, select or elect their um, their 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 rulers. So when we come to the quickly, uh, so Abu Bakr was basically with the Ahl al Hal wal Aqd, those who have the understanding of sharia understanding of politics understanding of the societies understanding of the world affairs came together and said this is the best among us to deal on to lead us in these conditions that we are in after the death of the prophet ﷺ. and then once those ahl al-hal wal aqd agreed on abu bakr they debated they were free to debate that for a while and finally, they agreed on Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. Then Bay'ah took from masses, from majority of the Muslims to confirm that selection was good. So we see Rasulullah sallallahu did not get into this area whatsoever directly. Well, Muslims understood indirectly because he used to appoint Abu Bakr to lead the Salah after him. And uh, he was always his company and so on and so forth. Uh, put him all the time on the on the top list of anything he does. So people get that hint, this is the best among us, but they debated freely for long, for days, before even burying the Prophet Sallallahu until they come the Ahl al-Hal wal to agree on, on Abu Bakr. And then from there, the, the, the whole Ummah given him that, uh, that bay'ah. So we have now two models. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ, where he said nothing about it, clearly, explicitly. Now, and the people by themselves have come to shura and consultation and debating the subject and debating the candidate and coming to consensus. This is who is going to nominate to the ummah and give him the bayah and ask the ummah to do that. Abu Bakr has selected different methods, which is appointed in his life Umar ibn al-Khattab and asked people to give him bay'ah and to obey him and it went smoothly and everybody was agreed on that one. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and has selected seven that he thought the best of the ummah to among them select Khalifa. 
the seven come to select uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiyallahu ta'ala delegated all this affair to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and said you appoint Khalifa that you want and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf found the opinions basically either Ali or Uthman and then he went in consultation and collecting opinion throughout the Medina and other places and he realized that it is Uthman is the one who has the majority, the, the overwhelming majority. And he appointed him and asked, we want to give him the bay'ah, including Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was the candidate. Uh, but also he gave him the bay'ah. The bay so when Uthman radiallahu ta'ala was killed, uh, the Ummah definitely uh, went a little bit in chaos, but the uh, Sahaba immediately went to Ali ibn Abi Talib and gave him the place to leave. But he said, um, I don't want to take it in his house and in the said, I want to take it in public. He said, let's all go to the masjid and make it clear and create debate. If that's what the people want, I will take it. If not, then we are not. And they made it public in the masjid and debated Masjid Rasulullah And then he was accepted that and so on and so forth. So we see different methods. And that's why Allah said, Inna Allah ya'amurukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. How? We have seen here five methods. That the trust of leadership given to those who are qualified to it. And any method you take, it is fine. I mean, you appoint it. There is, the Islam doesn't care about the real method. The Islam care about is the best and the most qualified is put in the place to take this amana and we have seen here this those models so um the what is the relationship between uh bay'a and election um in islam there is basically after after nominating after debating and nominating then the ahl al-hal wal give the bay'a and then ask to com be conferred by the masses as many as they could. So, al um, um, the, 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 the covenant or the pledge, uh, they are all based on free will. It's not, none, none, none of them is full. Nobody said you have to give the bay'ah. It's Islamically, traditionally, that if the elite, if the Ahl al-Hal wal if the more qualified Ahl al-Shura give the bay'ah, it becomes a kind of obligation and the rest to do it. But there are some that didn't do it, and there is nothing wrong with that. The second one also, the, um, the, 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 the bay'ah and the election, um, based on the majority opinion, is not really exclusive to everybody, nor in minorities or those of the interest and the people who lobby and so on and so forth. And we come to also the next um, item is whether you do it in 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 bay'a as the sahaba did to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an or you do election finally basically the main goal is to to addul amanati ila ahliha. Now we're gonna quickly and we'll stop here and then actually we might have three sessions to go through this. Uh, what is the relationship between election and shura? Uh, shura uh, basically means is, uh, deliberating and debating the matter or the person and then finally come with the decision. Uh, that is what the shura. It's uh, expressing opinions and then uh, taking consensus or vote or opinions. But first it got to start with del del deliberation where all uh, matters being put and debated and finally the uh, voting comes to select the best. So that is shura means given, which is given the floor for everybody 
who is qualified and well known to debate and deliberate and then taken now put them back together and uh, give the bayah to the one that is uh, that is obviously the most qualified and uh, the word sura basically coming from 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 extracting the the honey from the hives that's what is what is the the process so you, you go to the hives of the bees and then you extract the honey this is what shura means um and now we know it is it's exclusive only to the people who have opinion understanding and learn and especially in the subject not for everybody as uh, shura once the shura have decided something then can be put to the masses and for the general vote uh, just to confirm it. And that's exactly what happened to all of this, uh, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and so on and so forth. Um, and so um, you can say uh, Shura, uh, election is part of Shura, you can say that. But Shura is a greater and wider in perspective and we will discuss that inshallah later. Uh, the many evidence is the following. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ This is a, a clear, straightforward evidence that their matters, their rulingship matters is subject to the shura among them. And the second one is قول الله تعالى فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضلا غليظ القلب لم فضل من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأم. This is an order from Allah سبحانه وتعالى to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he, no matter how the result was, this is because of the of the defeat uh, in the battle of Uhud. Uh, Allah told him still. Uh, the, you, you consulted them, you went to the battle, you got kind of defeat. That doesn't mean to rule out the shura. Still, you have to practice shura in all matters that related to the ruling, to the rulership. Um, it, the, uh, those are clear stated from the Quran, but also. Shura related to the matter of deen and dunya, matter of religion and matter of affairs of humanity and so on and so forth. So election, as we know, is just a matter of uh, contract between people committed to serve the best interest of the masses and the people. So it is a small, a small part of Shura, the election. Um, definitely, uh, now, there are people saying somebody has to qualify for shura. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ actually um, made it. Yes, there are some Ahl al-Hal wal aqad those who can, who can, who can, can build a contract and enforce it and then put it to the masses to, uh, to confirm it and to uh, abide by it. So, uh, now, what is election? Basically, a means where someone will become a ruler. Uh, while shura is not that. Shura is first deliberating, studying uh, from Islamic point of view, Sharia point of view, from the benefit, from the conditions of this, and then take a decision. Uh, election is um, basically either you vote for a person or you vote for an issue, you vote. That's all what is it. Uh, it is, as we are going to see here in a little bit, um, it, it, it's, it, it's supposed to, to unify, but it becomes with the money in it, with the uh, interest group in it, with the parties in it, it becomes means of division instead of uh, unifying on the best interest of the whole ummah, it becomes friction and fight among those elite 
those have the money to spend, those have means to buy the vote, instead of the focus on the purpose originally is to serve the best interest of everybody, uh, not my party or his party and so on and so forth. Um, now, what I'm going to close with, inshallah next week we'll, 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 we'll continue uh, the, the subject that is in Islam. Uh, well, we know that kind of in, in, in the, you might say election it does not exist in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu or the Sahaba or the Tabi'een. And that is not correct. And this is our subject, inshallah, next week. That def there was exactly the way today election practiced uh, means give the people the vote and the opinion to um, to uh, select or elect or uh, nominate their rulers and hold them accountable. This is Islamic way. And we are going to show you from the life of the Prophet all the way to Suha Khulafa and Tabirin and Islamic history and Quran and Sunnah, inshallah ta'ala. So um, uh, with that, I think we are going to stop here. We need to uh, distinguish between uh, Sharia ruling and affairs, worldly matter affairs managing. These are not mixed. Sharia is something given by Allah and it is well defined and well known and has all uh, tools to be implemented. Now, the life affairs, the men affairs are something open to the people, to the society, to the time, to the conditions, so long as it is within the frame of the Sharia. Wallahu alam. Jakumullah khair. We'll stop here and we'll continue probably two sessions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. It sounds like tough stuff, tough materials to to comprehend and 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 uh, keep it, uh, you know, easy to, to follow. But uh, I'll open the session, inshallah. I know this is a, a very controversial subject, especially when we came to this countries in the 80s, uh, people think of it like, you know, you need to be very uh, um, educated in Islam and knowledge before you can even think about voting. But it seemed like, uh, according to what we heard, inshallah, I think we are advancing. So I'll open the session, inshallah, for whoever want to join and, and ask question or add comment or have some some issue with what's been presented. Zagallah khair, a very comprehensive uh, presentation. Jihan, go ahead. Yes. Uh, uh, I do not have any question, but just a comment. It was a very comprehensive and obviously there is a big misconception uh, among uh, Muslims uh, uh, that um, uh, yani the concept of elections and choosing, uh, there is a, a big misconception uh, that we tend to follow uh, the West or the non-Muslims uh, as per not just West um, in, in, a, in a blind uh, folded manner. Uh, we, there is definitely a distinction, a difference between the process of electing our leaders. There is definitely a, a process in, in, in a prescribed way by Quran as uh, Sheikh mentioned. So the distinction is definitely there. For us as Muslims, uh, when we elect or uh, define the process of, of uh, electing uh, our leaders, it clearly um, differentiates uh, between uh, how it is done by non-Muslims and how it should be done by Muslims. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. Here you are, you are on, you are on top of it. I mean, uh, this is only the introduction, and so we are going yeah. to catch.
that, I mean, basically, uh, this, this, this scholars have written these three, four, five books uh, to make us clear that really, really, election uh, means people have their say to uh, know the candidate very well and then vote for them and then support them or hold them accountable. This is Islamic principle with no doubt sure. about it and has in the Islamic literature uh, origin, origin, uh, origins. But uh, Muslims did not, uh, because of the Islamic history and circumstances, they did not present it and made it clear, accessible, build a lot of literature, uh, make it known to the masses of the people. Uh, in, in tyranny when they came, they just don't want this at all. So they, that's what the problem, but actually we are obligated to learn very well and be aware and practice the Sharia and practice our rights and our duties, our responsibilities, and understand what we are doing and where our position. What shall we do? Allah, Zakallah Khair. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. I have uh, two questions, uh, a question and a comment. And uh, it's uh, since we are not sure uh, about the hukum or the rule of the elections in Islam, does it fall under the um, shubha? And we know all ittaqo uh, shubhat, try not to get into it. And um, aside from the hukum or the rule in Islam, I, I think um, participating in elections is a necessity and it's from min bab daf al trying to uh, prevent the harm in Muslims in this country, because we all know that there is a party that uh, encourages racism, and there is a party that suppresses racism, and we are among those who are targeted with the racism. And at least we are trying to uh, go in the right direction of giving uh, Muslims the freedom to live uh, in Islamic way, and not being forced, like we all know what happened in Spain after the uh, Islamic uh, rule has ended. Thank you. Okay. The first question will 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 defer it until we finish the discussion. That um, I mean, still people have question mark is election election that we know today in the Western world. Uh, we mean fair election, not the election that is going on in some part of the third world, which they call election, but it is not really election. It's not fair. It's not uh, transparent and so on and so forth. Election, that is we know and practice in the most of the Western world is, 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 uh, it has origin in Islam. And this is what we are going to find out uh, once we finish the second, third lecture, inshallah. Sister Lori, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Jazakallah here for all the knowledge you're imparting tonight. I thank you so much. Um, my question, Mesa kind of spoke to it, Sister Mesa spoke to it a little bit. Um, um, the fact that we are voting for in a secular election, really for the right to be able to practice our religion of Islam is, is, is the most important thing that I'm seeing. And I can't really speak to anything more in depth than that because my oh, lack of knowledge. Jazakallah khair. Well, yeah. uh you you have we, we have only two options either we get engaged and select the best among us to be there and the best among them also to be there then at least we prevent so many bad things and harm things to happen to us and to the rest of the society or we refrain and bury our heads in the sand and then we complain now we are subjected to this, we are subjected to this, this is against Islam, this is against Aqidah, this is against... So the, once you leave 
this matter mean you live your life and yeah the laws are going to govern you for crooked one for immoral one for you are going to pay for it you are going to suffer at least from a point of view of preventing that to be spread or to be forced on you you have to uh, practice your right you are guaranteed the right to express it and to put your input and to enforce it and to hold them accountable the other option just uh, basically bury your head in the sand and uh, think nothing is going to happen and that is not true Allahu alam but we will we will we will be in ta'ala we will make those clear in the next and third session inshallah jazakallah khair good ziad go ahead assalamu alaikum Sheikh, uh, b- before we jump into the election, we also need to, to understand the legality or the, the religious basis behind getting involved into election. And in the Quran, Sheikh, as we all of us know, Sayyidina Yusuf, alayhi salam, the Prophet Yusuf, became the minister of finance in a state in Egypt where when it was not an Islamic state. And the state did not improve after him. It became like the Pharaoh ruler who, who claimed to be God. I mean, if we take that example, Sheikh, it's pretty much similar to, to where we live right now. We are in a state that maybe going into uh, the uh, wars, it's going down. And, but getting involved is, is illegal. It's a religious point here. So back to to the to the sister Mesa and Lori, I think getting involved is uh, is uh, is required to order good and forbid bad. That's one of the ways to to apply this principle in Quran. Now, getting to to elect somebody, Sheikh, when you order good and forbid bad, Sheikh, you focus on one point. Are you trying to uh, uh, support this point, very specific or not? But when you elect somebody, Sheikh, you have to agree with him on everything in order to jump and, and elect. It's a tricky topic. And something you said last week, Sheikh, that I was thinking about when you said those people from, from Muslims are those who abandoned the masjid and jumped into the wagon to, 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 to ride the, the politics. That's also an interesting point, Sheikh. Why, why, those, why, why we get only faces who are not taking Islam to the core but well, I mean, to just uh, try to uh, to to weasel and try to maneuver their way, try to hide sometimes their Islam, try not to show their Islam, try to just go with the stream. I know it's not a question, but just many ideas in my head that I'd like you, Sheikh, to come across them in the future sessions. Jazakallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah khair. Inshallah. Sheikh Mohammed, uh, some Muslim, you know, a lot of Muslims have concern about the candidates. Like, would I be responsible in front of Allah for choosing such a candidate who is like racist? He has racism in him, or somebody who is bringing evil things. Okay with it, you know the bad stuff in the society. I mean, I if I if I select this guy, I know this guy is bad, and this guy is also have his own bad. So, are we? That's why, that's, why you, you, that's why you select the, 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 the least evil, but they all, all are evil. They are, you, are not in, you have not many options to select the best and the good and the pure and the other way. It is all mixed. And so you have to, uh, to be wise enough and aware enough and to practice uh, whatever power you have at least to prevent to minimize to stop evil from taking over all part of your life any more uh, comment or question before we conclude inshallah i mean i mean i could i could say one thing sheikh if if muslims need something from a president it would be one thing one single thing the freedom of choice the freedom of religion and justice if he's a Christian, Jewish, or n- neither, if he stands for these two or three principles, we can at least be encouraged to elect this guy and choose him because he stands for something Allah does not 
he, he says that he doesn't like injustice. He doesn't like uh, the opposite of freedom of choice. Well, th that is the question we are going to try to answer. Is it optional for us to get engaged or no? Is it required? Is it an obligation? We get to understand the Sharia. What, what is it, this matter, what is it that is going to touch the life of you and your children, your wife, your family, and the present and the future? What is the hukm of it? What is the ruling of it? I should be just um, passive and I don't care and let heaven fall on earth and I'm one of the whole people. Or Islam tells us uh, that is an obligation to get engaged and order good and for good bad to the best you can. Wallahu alam. Those are the questions we are going to try to discuss and answer, inshallah. Jazakallah. Inshallah, tomorrow we will continue with Surah al Shu'ara since nobody's have any, any question. Tomorrow, inshallah, uh, at 8 o'clock. So be ready, read the tafsir, and uh, inshallah, connect with Sheikh Muhammad with whatever uh, question or, or comment you have. All right. Allah khair, Sheikh Muhammad. May Allah bless you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all and make you safe and, and be protected, um, protected from this uh, evil called uh, coronavirus. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika. Shadwan la ilaha illa at. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, come on.